To ensure that your prescription drugs do not fall into the wrong hands, dispose of them properly. TGMC recently launched a new system to safely dispose of medications through a MedSafe receptacle. This system will help the community properly dispose of unused prescription medications, reducing the risk of unintended or illegal drug use, accidental poisoning, and contaminants in our waterways. Well, an opioid is a drug and or substance that acts on the brain. It actually acts on the nervous system, and a part of the nervous system is the brain, the spinal cord. The spinal cord extends to several organs and several systems in the body, and it acts, these medicines act on the central nervous system to relieve pain. When we see continued use, repetitive use, it can lead to dependence, it can lead to tolerance, and it can also lead to withdrawal symptoms if stopped abruptly. Now, I'd like to just say, under the category of opioids, you see medicines that we treat treat pain in the emergency department. They include medications like oxycodone, hydrocodone. Um, some of the, uh, the popular names are um, Lortab, Vicodin, Percocet. The addiction to painkillers, the addiction to opioids is more of a global epidemic. This, this epidemic has affected the health, the social, and economic welfare of all communities. The CDC actually uh, put out a statistic recently that stated that 91 Americans die every day from opioid overdose. Louisiana is one of eight states that has more opioid prescriptions than it has residents. We have uh, one of the highest prescription per capita rate in the entire nation. 1.03 prescriptions written per person in the state of Louisiana. The number of unintentional overdoses in the United States has quadrupled since 2000 according to the CDC and specifically in Louisiana since 1999. So as we at Terrebonne General Medical Center attempt to, to tackle this epidemic, we understand totally its far-reaching implications. So the question is, does opioid addiction target anyone in particular? And the answer to that is no. Opioid addiction targets every race, every age, every ethnicity, every community, every socioeconomic group. So the type of issues that we face as an emergency department um, as it pertains to opioid addiction, well, we see a wide range of effects. We see a wide range of individuals that come in. So I'd like to categorize it as like yellow flags, red flags, and how they progress on. So yellow flags, when we see patients that come in the emergency department, we see multiple visits to the emergency department. We see pain prescription refill requests in the emergency department. We see dose escalation requests. We also see specific requests for IV pain medications uh, in the emergency department to treat pain. And then we progress on to red flags that we see. So those red flags are uh, patients that come in, we call this polypharmacy, doctor shopping, hospital shopping, emergency department shopping. So this is an escalation to the red flags and progression, we see a large variety of, um, of, of effects that it has on the community. We think about, well, who's to blame for why this is happening? Um, and we think about, well, are the physicians too heavy with their prescription pads? Or, or are the big pharmaceutical companies holding the pen? Or, are we as a society, are we just too ingrained in quick fixes? And truthfully, we all play a part in this, in this epidemic and we can all be a part of the, the solution. So some of the ways that we, we have attempted to limit opioid dependence in the emergency department. Number one, when writing prescription painkillers, we will decrease or lower the dosage of pain medications that we uh, prescribe in the emergency department. Number two, we attempt to lower the quantities of pain killers that we write in the emergency department. And thirdly, we also attempt to uh, use alternative treatment options in the emergency department as well that can treat pain beautifully, all while 
providing exceptional health care with compassion. TGMC launched the MedSafe program as a tool for the public to have a way to dispose of unwanted, unused, or expired medications. Um, and it's also a way to keep prescription drugs from getting into the wrong hands. Basically, the way the program works is the public brings their medications. They can dispose of them in the return bin. Once it is full, our staff will take the medications, return them to the company for destruction. Our staff does not have access to any of the meds in that box. We have it under 24-hour surveillance as well as multiple locks on the bin as well. What I, I think about this program, it allows the community to be a part of the solution. We've talked about how physicians can be a part of the solution. Now, the community can be a part of that same solution. So it keeps us from allowing these drugs to be uh, illegally used within our community. It also limits the accidental use of these drugs by our pediatric population. We see that pretty often. There are um, medications lying around and kids take them. And so it, it also helps to limit the accidental use of these medications. And it also keeps these medications from getting into our water supply. You would be surprised how people attempt to do the right thing by pouring them down the sink or flushing them and then they end up in our water supply. I say this MedSafe receptacle is a great idea. This is a great idea that TGMC has, has decided to tackle this epidemic head on, and it's a win-win for everybody. It could, keeps the community safe. The MedSafe receptacle is located at the entryway of the Medical Arts Building, which can be accessed from the Boulanger Street entrance. Um, it is available Monday through Friday, early morning until late evening. Mm. Mm. TGMC, a new way of health. What is a pulmonologist? Joining us today is Dr. Andrea Lorio, pulmonologist and critical care specialist at TGMC. She will be explaining what a pulmonologist does, common conditions they treat, and whether or not you should see one. Pulmonology is a subspecialty of internal medicine. Um, it focuses on the prevention, the diagnosis and treatment of lung disorders. The respiratory system is the system in our body that helps us to breathe. It includes the airways, the lungs, and all of the muscles that help the lungs do their function. So some of the common conditions that pulmonologists treat are anything that affects the airway, including asthma, bronchitis, cough, diagnosis of things like lung cancers, pulmonary fibrosis, uh, and COPD or emphysema. COPD stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It's a chronic inflammation of the airways that both traps air in the lung when you try to breathe out and makes it very difficult for you to breathe when you're trying to get air in. It also increases your risk of getting lung infections. There are two common conditions associated with COPD. The first is emphysema, and the second is chronic bronchitis. Emphysema is the destruction of the smallest parts of the airway and the alveoli, which are the little air sacs in the lung. The second is chronic bronchitis. It's the recurrent lower respiratory tract infections and chronic cough associated with damage from cigarette smoking. There are certain risk factors and common causes associated with COPD. The biggest one in the United States is smoking or exposure to secondhand smoke. Typically we see the onset of symptoms after about 40 years old in smokers or people who have uh, significant smoke exposure. Uh, there are also a lot of environmental and work uh, factors that can play a role in the development of COPD such as fumes or inhalation of different uh, dusts associated um, in the work environment. Um, and then there's also some genetic component to COPD and we're finding that there are traits that are passed down and can be tested for in people who start developing symptoms of COPD younger than 40 years old. 
So there are a lot of complications associated with COPD. The most common is frequent lung infections. Uh, people with COPD are more likely to catch a cold or a bronchitis. Um, it's very important for COPD patients to stay up to date with uh, pneumonia and flu vaccines. Uh, there's also an increased risk of heart-related events, including uh, heart failure and heart attacks. Um, and this can also be related to continued smoking in many COPD patients. Uh, COPD patients also have an increased risk of developing lung cancers. And so that's something that should be followed and monitored. Um, there's also increased risk of things like depression and anxiety for people who have COPD because when it's difficult to breathe, that can be a very scary thing. COPD is diagnosed by evaluation by your doctor, um, which can be supplemented by doing lung function tests or pulmonary function tests, as well as x-rays or CAT scans of the chest uh, and blood tests to look for genetic causes of COPD. COPD is very common. It's estimated that over 30 million people in the United States have COPD, and many of them don't even know it. There's not a cure to COPD per se, but COPD is treatable. Uh, with proper management of COPD, we can preserve lung function and quality of life. There are several treatments for COPD. First and foremost is if you're smoking, we need to help you quit. The second is medications. There's a lot of medications we can use to help control symptoms, namely inhalers that can help keep the airways open and we use oxygen to help supplement medications to help with shortness of breath. Someone should see a pulmonologist when they're experiencing shortness of breath that can't be explained for other reasons, or a cough that lasts uh, more than four to six weeks, uh, or if there's concern from their primary care doctor that something else might be going on and further investigation is needed. The biggest tip I could give to people to keep their respiratory system healthy is to not smoke. And if you do smoke, talk to your doctor about ways to quit. Mary Bird Perkins TGMC Cancer Center offers a free smoking cessation clinic called Go Free. for sure is definitely going to be my dad. He taught me a lot about growing up, being a man, uh, full of integrity, things like that. Uh, the clubs that I'm involved with, there's a lot um, going from Ultimate Frisbee, which is still considered a club, but we think of it as a sport. Chess club, sport and language club. Well, the main sport that I like is tennis, and I've been involved all five years. Um, another sport that I'm in that I love is cross country. I started that 10th grade year. Um, with spare time, I'll usually hang out. I'm obviously hanging out with my friends on the weekends. Um, I usually go try and catch Spare time with my father, my mom, uh, watch movies. My plans after high school are uh, to get into LSU, to get into LSU Law School, study pre-law undergrad. To be nominated and to receive this award, I mean, it's really, I, I can't express my gratitude. It's really, really in a way humbling because I, I really didn't see this coming in any way. I just, I enjoy the sports that I play and to be honored for that, it's, it's really gratifying. TGMC's Healthy Lifestyle Centers, Wellness Tip of the Week. Try an exercise anyone can do to improve lung health. Simply breathe in through your nose and breathe out for twice as long. Deep breathing also helps reduce stress 